I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. In this video, we're gonna do an Inkscape tutorial. I'll show you how to make a nautical depth chart map like this one. Today, we'll do Florida. This is the Florida Keys here highlighted. In the past, I've done regular maps and just done a generic ocean, but this idea comes from a comment from over a month ago that says, Hello, Rick, I request you make a video about cartography, like Florida with water depth level. Check out this link. So I thought that was a great idea, and I just couldn't find a way to make it in a succinct enough tutorial until now. So today we'll go through a step-by-step -step beginner, beginner, intermediate level lesson where we can go over some basic Inkscape skills and broken down into two parts. First, we'll make the coastline using openstreetmap.org, which is a site, free open resource to get the map data. And OpenStreetMap has a sister site called OpenCMap, which is gonna provide the water depth levels. So let's begin. Let's queue up OpenStreetMap. So this is the default. Before we go, let's give credit where credit is due. This is all free data that is contributed by people all over the world. If you're gonna use it outside of Inkscape, just make sure to give them credit. So thank you, OpenStreetMap. And back to our map here. So we'll do Florida today. This is beautiful, but we can't download this version. We need an SVG format, which they will provide if we choose a different setting. So go over here to layers and choose standard. And this is gonna allow us to pull out uh, a file that we can manipulate in Inkscape. So over here, go to share, set custom dimensions, and you can have a bounding box here. Don't make it too big. I just need the coastline. And for some reason, no matter where in the world you choose, it's gonna get a lot more of the ocean than you expect. Let's minimize this just for the keys down here. For format, you wanna to go to SVG, that's for the vector file, and scale, just change it from scale one to one. Sometimes if you push enter, it'll automatically download. If it doesn't, then click download. Okay, that took a couple seconds, but here it is, map nine. I'm gonna drag it onto my desktop, minimize this, go back into Inkscape, get some open space, and let's drag map nine or whatever yours is called, just drag it back to the workspace. You'll get a dialog box. The first setting, include SVG image as an editable object. DPI rendering for SVG, I change it to 100, and then image rendering mode blocky. So I'll push OK. Here we go, I had to pause the recording for a second because my Inkscape spins as it downloaded this big file. But that's why we changed the settings to the 100 DPI and then blocky just as an effort to reduce the file size. So let's delete a lot of this extra information because again, all we want is the coastline. So let's zoom out and see what we're working with. Okay, here's what we got. So to extract just the coastline, let's first push escape. So nothing selected and double click somewhere on all this busy area with the different colors because I wanna grab any item, there we go. So I've got all this color, whatever that object is. Then hold shift, make a bounding box over all that business and then delete. So now what we have is just four quadrants that make up the ocean, which creates the coastline that we need. So a very important step, we have to now unify these four quadrants. So hold shift on all the quadrants, go to path, union. That's a key step, especially for new users to Inkscape because we need one unified object to allow the other path functions to work properly. So watch this, I'm gonna grab the Create Rectangles tool and the part that I want, this is the coastline area we're gonna highlight. I'll drag out my rectangle, it'll be on top of our ocean to start. So go back to Selector, these right here, this is Hierarchy. Drop it down Hierarchy until it's behind the ocean, like that. So actually maybe I want it a little bit more of the coastline. So I'll raise it up. Let's say this is the area that I want. So I've got that behind there. Hold shift, click the ocean again, then go to path difference. And there we go. So now we have the coastline. Let me zoom in and show you. So take a look how intricate that is. It's actually too intricate for our needs. If I double click on this, it'll show all the different nodes that make up this shape. You see that? That's impressive, but that's gonna slow us down. So let's go back to selector tool. I click selector, I'll zoom out again so you can see that the object is selected. All the nodes are still there, they're just not highlighted. And go to path, simplify. Barely a noticeable change, but look how much easier it is to move around now, which means it's a lot lighter and won't cause as much stress on Inkscape. On to part two. So the coastline came from OpenStreetMap. Let's go back there. 
and we're going to get the water depth levels from OpenCMAP. So here's OpenStreetMap. That's the main page. This is another free resource, OpenCMAP. So thank you again for providing this information. We'll go to full screen chart. I have it queued up to Florida. Here it is. And there's the water depth level. It's pretty cool. Pause the tutorial. I noticed watching this back, I forgot to mention, you have to go to view and choose only marine profile. If you don't have marine profile, you don't get the water depth. If you choose water depth, it gives you boating information that's not really artistic. So just choose, unclick the depth contours, just choose marine profile, and that will give you this. That's important information. So we're gonna choose whatever part you want. I like how there's more of a fluctuation in depth down here. Looks like Florida and the Keys are kind of on one shallow shelf. So we need to do an actual screen capture. So there's no download function built into this. So if you don't know how to do a screen capture, just put a comment below. We'll see if I can help you out. And if you do know how, just grab the area that you think will look best. How about that? Back in Inkscape, I can bring in the screen capture, just dragging it into the workspace. For the import settings, I just go with the default from file and then rendering none, okay? And look at this, look at the scale difference. This is a beautiful SVG download and here's an itty bitty screen capture. So let's scale this up. What we're gonna do is use this and our trusty trace bitmap function to pull the colors out of this. So if you've never used trace bitmap, go to path, trace bitmap, you get your menu up here. We're gonna go to multiple scans and then choose colors. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna look at this image and then extract the colors based on the number of scans that we choose. Let's go to 18. Usually we click smooth, stack, and remove background. In this case, we don't wanna choose stack. So unclick stack. If you do update, it'll give you a preview and then click apply. Trace bitmap gives us this, which is the same thing except now in vector format. Let me show you what it did. So I can grab any of the colors. If you double click, you can pull them apart and this is how we're gonna make the layers. So let's just undo that, because before we do that part, I wanna get rid of all this extra unnecessary stuff. So again, grab that color right there. I'm gonna do shift and capture everything I can in that area and then delete. So the question comes up, why didn't we just use this method for the coastline of Florida? And it comes down to two things. One, artistic value. It just, I think it's one thing to fudge on the exact contours of water depth levels. But if you're familiar with Florida or wherever map you're choosing, you want a good coastline that's accurate. And the best way to do that is from the open street map data. Open sea map, this is perfect for the contours. It actually works out really well with a lighter file size. But that's why we're doing it this way. So we do want to clean up this part here. So it's time for some Bezier pen action. Just make a quick shape on top of the white area you're going to get rid of. Once you have it. Now I've got my opacity down so you can see what we're doing. I'll go back to selector tool. I want to grab the initial shape. So there's the initial shape. There's the new shape. Path union. So it didn't matter that it was transparent. Now see, there's some leftover parts. There's a couple ways you can clean up that. You can grab just the parts you want with the bounding box. See how I've got those nodes I don't want anymore? And then just push delete. Or like up here in the top corner, you can just drag a node to connect the parts. And through the magic of editing, our depth contours are ready to go. So I brought in a color palette because I want to go fast and cheat. So if you want to play along with the exact colors, I'll put the color codes in the description below. Now the deepest layer I already have set, we're going to recolor each layer, add a drop shadow, and I'll show you how to put in a little light texturing so it almost looks like a relief. We're going to repeat the same sequence for each layer, and I'll show you another cheat or a hack where we can actually paste the styles to go faster. So we'll grab this color here. First, I'll change it to the new color that I want. Raise it to the top. So hierarchy here, raise it to the top. Control D will duplicate it. And here's the one time we have to set this up and then we'll copy the style each time. So if I have that selected, I want to go to stroke. Stroke, I want it to have a 1.5 stroke. The number doesn't matter, but you see how it actually creates a wider part. I'm gonna be turning this into a drop shadow and it works better if it's a little bigger. So we have got the stroke for fill, go to full black and then blur, just eyeball it. Maybe we'll try nine. Let's just go with 10 to be safe. We can always change it. 
So there is the part we're gonna be copying. So go to edit, copy. So now we'll drop it down one layer and we've got the new, there's our drop shadow effect. So that was the one time setup. Now watch the next one. So I grab this layer, I go to eyedropper, change the color, raise it to the top hierarchy, control D duplicates it. Then this top one will become the drop shadow, edit, paste, style. It automatically changes. Then just lower it down and move it. And we'll repeat that each time. So dropper, we're on this color now. Raise it to the top, control D duplicates it, edit, paste style, and then drop it down one more layer. Okay, there's another editing time jump, and here it is, all the different depth levels, and this is where you can have fun with it. You can change the colors. You don't have to use this color palette. You can keep it monochromatic if you want. We'll drop Florida in at the end, but I do want to show you the part about texture if you want to add that. It's not a true texture like we normally use from the filters. It's going to be a pattern overlay. So let's grab the bottom most depth. We'll do control D to duplicate that. And you see this thing here it looks like an old tile linoleum. <laughs> we'll click on that pattern. Now mine's defaulted to old paint. It's one of the defaults, so you should have it. And we'll reduce the opacity down to, I'll just type in 20%. And just like before, I'm going to go to edit, copy. So that is going to copy this style to the next one. So grab the next one, control D, edit, paste style. The next one, control D. There's even a shortcut, shift control V. And we'll go up the line. One more time jump and we are done with the texturing. I also realized I forgot to recolorize the top four layers. So sorry about that. Uh, but let's bring in Florida now, let's zoom out. I just happen to have it right over here. Pop this baby in there. And again, you can change the color scheme or palette, anything you want. I really did like this suggestion. So thanks again for the idea. If you have a nautical map location that you do want to see, I think I'll do another one of these. Also, if you have an idea for a different tutorial, just put it down in the comments. So thanks a lot. I hope this was helpful and have fun with it.